What's good YouTube? Welcome to episode 2 of our large grid drill optimization tests. In the last episode we tested to see how many blocks we should put in between our drills. And I decided that I'm going to put drills side by side for the playthrough that we're currently working on. In this episode we're going to work on figuring out what the optimum speed would be for the drills. And I've devised a test that we're going to do to find out exactly what the optimum speed is. This test consists of a series of piston driven drills that go to the end of the finish line and a special little thing that I've decided to do for the end to let us know which one reaches its destination first. So the build began with downward facing pistons just so we could drive some drills into the ground. I decided to use a solid block for the elbow here because I don't have to worry about passing items through. I then grouped the pistons together and hid them away so they don't get in the way in the future. Next I placed 5 pistons on each one of the columns. I figured 5 would be enough, it should get us some pretty good distance so we can get a solid test. I then grouped each one of the rows of pistons together in its own group from group G1 to G25. I figured 25 rows should be enough to get us a decent test. At this point I cleaned up what was left over. The next thing to do was set the speeds of each individual group beginning at point 1 and moving up in point 1 increments each column. In order to do this I just divided whatever speed I wanted by 5. In order to set up the finish line system that I wanted to use, I actually needed to extend a row of pistons all the way to the end just to see how far they would go. This step is a necessity at this point. I needed to figure out how far the pistons would extend in order to set up these sensors that will stop the entire test. Now that I had the endpoint marked, it was time to start laying out the finish line. I then placed one sensor per each of the 25 individual columns. The next step was to set each one of the sensors to only detect subgrids and not players, as well as set up the, the sensor distance for each one of the sensors. I set the sensor distance to the same, which is basically just one block thick and made sure that it extended out to where the end of the drill was. After testing the way I wanted to set everything up, I decided to go ahead and place the lights that will be used to indicate which one wins. In order to make the lights more visible, I decided to use the rotating lights from the DLC. I also decided that green would probably be the best color to show up in the sunlight. I then placed all of the timer blocks and set it up to where each of the sensors would trigger its timer block now and set the timer block specifically up to stop all of the pistons and turn on its specific light. That way whenever the sensor was triggered it would in turn shut off all of the pistons and trigger the light above it, giving a clear indication of which drill actually reached its destination first. As a final touch to the test I decided to go ahead and just put a scoreboard to show which one the winner was. I then ran the first series of tests with the conclusion that I believed we would have between the range of 0.1 to 1 meter per second there's not really anything holding it back. I also did the same thing from 1 meter per second to 2 meters per second realizing that it is capable of moving faster than 2 meters per second I decided to move on to higher numbers. I then moved on from 1 to 2 meters and moved into 2 to 3 meters with an increase of 0.1 per column. So we had our first breakage at 2.7 so I decided to set the rest of the tests up around that number and give it quite a few individual tests. So I went and did 9 individual tests and put them all together for you guys to see at the very end. Now before I get to that I'd like to thank you for watching it all the way through and ask you to subscribe as well. We are very close to reaching 1,000 subscribers and also if you want to push the video forward so more people see it, go ahead and hit that like button. 
as well as commenting if you have any tests that you would like to see me perform in the future. And on to the final results. So I ran nine tests at varying numbers between 0.1 and 3 meters per second. And what I noticed is that if you want to have a clang free setup, you don't want to go any higher than 0.8 meters per second. That seems to be the sweet spot for movement without jerking around. But if you don't mind a little bit of clanginess, then 2.6 meters per second seems to be the fastest you can safely go. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, click one of the two videos on your screen now. Thank you. Have a nice day.